everyone to the May 22nd, 2023 Walton City Council work session. Uh, tonight, first item on the agenda is a parks bond projects update uh, led by our two esteemed parks gentlemen, Ross and Rich. Welcome to, to both of you. And Ross is in via Zoom. I am. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillors. We, uh, Rich and I are here tonight to um, present the first of what we know will be a series of, of updates, reports, and communications with, with you, Mayor and Council. And we want to talk tonight about um, what really is some, some highly valued community-focused uh, uh, projects that really came out of a, a really robust uh, engagement process. And we want to talk through those projects, the timing of those projects, how we're going to communicate with, with our community, how we hear from our community, and how that informs the decisions we make about design for some of these specific projects. So we'll walk through uh, that information with you tonight. Please ask questions, and, um, and we will provide answers. On our next slide, you, you might recall the uh, connection between the, the bond investments, the parks bond investments that voters approved in November of 22, and aligning those priorities with the priorities that are the city council vision items. And so this, this graphic shows those connections, the investment areas in the parks bond across the top column and the city council uh, vision items along the left uh, the left column. So I uh, wanted to share those with you and just demonstrate that there's really strong alignment between um, what we see in, in, in our from the city council perspective, but also what our community uh, values and treasures, and that this bond really uh, emphasizes a connection between both of those. And on, on um, you might recall a, a really robust discussion through focus groups, through polling, uh, through conversations at our Tea Park Committee, uh, but then of course at, at council. But then there was also, you might recall, a direction uh, from you, Council, to create a, a committee, a true key stakeholder committee throughout our community that represented different groups and different interests, and bringing that group together to refine and put together the final investment areas for a bond package. And so we just wanted to recognize uh, the folks listed here that were key in, in um, selecting the bond investment areas and bringing that recommendation back to you uh, for your approval. That resulted in this. And so these are the key investment areas you might recall trail connections, river access, athletic field improvements, uh, and upgrades to existing parks, acquiring and protecting natural areas, and making those key playground equipment improvements that are much needed throughout our community. And now Rich is going to talk specifics. I'm gonna give you a bit of an update on where we stand on projects in those areas you, sh you saw in that pie chart. Uh, we'll start with river access. And we're pleased to report uh, just last Friday, we closed on a property next to Tualatin Community Park, um, which is potentially the river access location. We did the due diligence that you saw and it's feasible to connect with the non-motorized river access point at on that property. And so um, we, we expect design to begin fall winter of 23-24. That'll be quite an extensive process. This is a piece of property that we don't have a site plan on there'll be fairly extensive community engagement to determine the different features, the different uh, amenities on, on that property. Uh, construction will follow. Just so you take, you can see here, this, we've got the bond broken into two phases. And the first phase, uh, the bond sales, which Don has informed you of, have been sold. And so that goes, about 2023 to 2026. And then the second phase, which hasn't, the bonds have not been sold yet, is, is in that 2026 to 2029. And so construction would be in the second phase of, of the bond funds. 
playground upgrades. Um, we're happy to tell you playground upgrades are moving forward pretty quickly to show the community the result of the bond um, of, of the bond initiative and their support of the bond. Um, and so at a Folody and at IBAC Park, just two pieces of equipment are being replaced there, two major pieces of equipment. They're wood post pieces. Uh, recently, those two playgrounds within the last several years have had major renovations. And so that equipment will re be replaced at those two parks. Jurgens is a total replacement, uh, surface and equipment. And so um, that a, a T Park helps select Folody and IBAC equipment. T Park selected three options for Jurgens, which then went out to public engagement, and the over 400 members um, selected the equipment. And about 80% of people wanted the equipment that that will you'll see out there, and was a result of that engagement. And so that equipment is all ordered, and those projects are scheduled for construction fall of 2023 this year. So we'll be really, really happy as we move forward with those. Trail connection, this is Nyberg Wetlands. Um, so over by the freeway, um, Nyberg Wetlands runs from about the freeway to uh, 65th. And we have the easement, the land rights already. They're on Rolling Hills apartment side, just down in the natural area, pretty high. And so um, that, that will probably start design in first quarter of 2024. And they, again, construction isn't until the second phase of the funding project. With the Veterans Plaza improvements, um, we're well into construction design. That um, is happening right now. That started uh, a while ago. And we can expect to go out to construction bid probably fall, early winter of 2023. This is a real timing issue with Punk and Regatta not wanting to have construction go on during Punk and Regatta. So both design and construction are in the first phase of, of the bond. Uh, project or program. Athletic fields, um, the school partnership is funded for construction in the second phase, but Ross and Julie are working with the school district and other partners to plan for that, for, for that effort. And so some of the, the kind of immediate uh, things you'll see is Tualatin Community Park field lights, we can't get replacements, about maybe 20 or 25% are burnt out. And so this will switch those lights over into energy efficient LEDs, It'll be much more effective and efficient, um, lower energy costs, more sustainable. And so that project has started and that planning is, is going on with the Tualatin Youth Softball Program at this time. Uh, there'll be some other field improvements. You'll see some um, backstop safety improvements, maybe some fencing improvements at different uh, neighborhood parks and our community park in Tualatin um, while the partnership with the school district is being planned. Uh, the natural areas, um, and so natural areas, we do have several acquisitions. I won't go into detail on them. Um, that, that, that city staff is working on and, and you'll be aware of or have been aware of um, in the near future here. And with that, I think, uh, Ross, I'll hand it back over to you. Thank you, Rich. So as Rich was talking through the specifics of the, of the various projects in the, in the bond program, um, I think one of the key things that... Um, we are really excited about in our work is is for the projects to truly truly reflect the desires of our community and ensure that what the the dollars we invest in our park system are for infrastructure that our community will use and benefit from so the specifics matter and a key part of that is uh is our t park our parks advisory committee 
Um, and we've got a fantastic group of folks invested in this work. And we have uh, this committee will act as our accountability committee, the group that that really says, hey, hey, city staff, um, let's let's make sure we do this differently or let's ensure that we uh, we hear this specific voice uh, in this process. Uh, T Park will play that role. And so we've asked T Park for that for that role uh, with staff and we have uh, they have accepted. And so far, uh, Rich talked about the playground uh, selection process by T Park and uh, they've just done a fantastic job um, being that key link, uh, that that city council appointed group of, of community members uh, to, to help us uh, gain as many voices as possible. So we're going to continue to do that. And um, we, we absolutely will talk here in just a second on, a, on another slide about the connection uh, to community members directly and engagement and out, outreach efforts. Um, but T Park is absolutely essential in this in this process uh, throughout the bond program. And on the next slide, uh, this talks a little bit about some of the tools we'll use uh, to connect throughout the, the parks bond program. Obviously, city council meetings uh, on a on a twice a year basis at least will come with this type of a presentation with detail, timing, updates, um, challenges. We'll present all of that to you on a six month every six months. Um, I mentioned T Park meetings. Of course, they're all they're all um, on Zoom. Anyone can participate in our in our T Park meetings and provide comment, uh, as well as coming to physical locations where T Park meeting meetings are held. And essentially, every single month, every agenda at a T Park meeting over the next several years are going to be there's going to be an agenda item on Parks Bond. And so, we encourage our community to come to those meetings if they're all interested in learning about the Parks Bond. And then um, website, email, uh, our eCity news and social media posts. Uh, we will be ensuring that that information is updated on a on a project by project basis, but, but also the whole picture basis. So presenting information like this, like this PowerPoint deck that you see, that you're seeing tonight, this will go up, uh, and we will house everything on that on that main city website. So when anyone in our community has a question about or wants further information about any project, we've we've got a spot for people to access that all the time. And um, one of the things that we know, um, you know, we we have the the best laid plans and we have a well vetted set of investment areas, uh, but we also know our community uh, knows our parks, trails and natural areas uh, better than we do as staff. And so we want to be able to hear and adjust as as people's desires change and shift and we can we can iterate. And so we've got a spot on our website. Um, when new ideas come up, we want to hear those ideas. And so we are openly soliciting ideas for, for uh, any, any element, the, any investment area within the bond project, but also outside of the selected investment areas. If, if there are some savings that we can have uh, that free up bond dollars at, towards the end of the bond program, that we can reallocate bond dollars for specific program projects that were suggested by community members, we want to be able to do that. So we're going to have, we will have a, we do have a spot on our website for people to submit ideas um, that are not part of the investment areas. Okay, here's the, the as we sort of concluding this, this overview and report, um, we're, we'll just talk through kind of next steps and where we're going to, going to go from here. So uh, Rich, do you want to take it from here? Sure. Uh, next steps were up with the community information that you saw on the slide before, um, getting that out there. The bonds are sold. We're starting the projects. We want to connect with the community and make sure they know what we're doing. So online, print, the city newsletter, all those pushing information, the status, updates on the projects, so the community knows what's what's happening with their bond. Um, we're proceeding with the projects and some are in planning, some are in the design stage, and very shortly in fall of this year, we'll be into construction uh, phase with some of the projects. So we're pushing forward with those projects so the community can see what their investment is doing to improve their park system. 
and T Park engagement. Um, every single meeting, this is on T Park's agenda, and they're discussing bond projects. Um, they're providing input. They're providing uh, their community's thoughts and their connections with different groups and organizations and individuals. They're bringing those in so that we have that input. It's considered as we move forward with the bond projects. Council updates, we're proposing semi-annually, twice a year. If if you want more or less, let us know and, and we can go from there. But uh, that's, that's what we have uh, right now for next steps as we move forward with the bond projects. And we're ready to answer any questions you might have and, and take any of your comments. So thank you. Rich, thanks Ross. Questions? Brett. Is that connection to Brown Street Park can be done on the trail? <laughs> yeah, it's coming very soon. <laughs> It's been coming soon for a while, and it's in the developer's hands. So, oh, are, are you're talking about behind the apartments? Yeah, behind. Right, I I I couldn't project at this point in time. Um, the trail is substantially complete, and we're waiting for some legal documents and compliance in order to be able to open it to the public. So it could be very. It, it could be short term or it could be longer term. It's in the developer's hands. Hopefully, less than the waiting the last year. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Councilor Hillier and then Councilor Brooks. Um, I was just wondering, you alluded to um, the, uh, people working on a partnership between the City of Tiger and City 12. And District, could you elaborate on that a little bit? What's what? Yeah, so Ross, Ross is involved in that. Yeah, this is the question, Councillor, was about the partnership between the school district and the cities. Is that right? Yes. So we have we have uh, a fantastic opportunity in front of us that our voters have indicated a preference to invest on school district property that is already publicly owned versus the city using bond dollars to go buy uh, new park land to accommodate all the new athletic fields. And so we are in the, we are in the midst of, um, it just met, uh, recently talked through uh, specifics. So we are, we are at the point of talking through specifics of the IGA and the inter IGA intergovernmental agreement coming together uh, in, in essentially what will be a three-party um, intergovernmental agreement between City of Tigard, City of Tualatin, and Tiger Tualatin School District to jointly operate and manage uh, the school district and city fields. And then uh, part two of that is how we invest jointly. And um, there is a, uh, will be a very robust community uh, engagement process to walk through site specific considerations at various schools to determine which schools and which sites are the best candidates to receive bond fund dollars for, through this parks bond. And so that's kind of the first step process is the operations agreement. The second step is the uh, specifics about site and that shows up in the later, uh, later agreement. So we are working hard on those. Thank you. And so you referred to Tualatin's parks bond dollars. Yes, but what, what's Tigard putting in? Do they have a parks bond that they're also putting towards? So the way that the, in its current draft form, what we are uh, looking at is, is that each city would contribute dollars to uh, facilities in their own city limits. So that city of Tualatin dollars will not leave the city limits of Tualatin. They will only be invested within the city. And so that's sort of the approach we're taking. City of Tigard, um, that would be up to to City of Tigard to to determine how and what and where they would want to invest in their in their city limits. But in terms of the school district, that that was kind of so. What they will bring to the table is the fields, right? Or or what would they what what will they bring to the table if we're bringing money? Correct. Thank you. Yes. So 
uh, Tiger Tualatin School District, they uh, investing with and, and partnering with the school district provides substantial savings to city of Tualatin taxpayers in that the facility, the, the, the ground already exists. We don't need to go purchase more, more property. And so there's substantial savings uh, for our tax taxpayers by investing by putting park spawn dollars on school district property that's already publicly owned. Um, and then uh, there's a mutual benefit. So not only can our community youth groups use those sports fields in the evenings and weekends, but the school district potentially also has use uh, during the school day. And so that's sort of the, the joint benefit of, of this type of arrangement. And this would and this would not be the first of its kind. This is done all over the United States. Thank you. Councilor Brooke. Getting used to the old microphones again. <clears throat> Thank you both for all the work that you've put in to this. It's been a really, I mean, I think I've been talking about this since I was first elected. So um, it's exciting to see it get to fruition to this point. <clears throat> My question is about the interfacing of the website. I think it's great that people can take a look at where we're at and contribute ideas. I'm just curious about, because there's so many different topics and the timeline's quite long, how people can, is it going to be easy to sift through information like based on topic or are they going to have to wade through different PowerPoints or um, how does that work? That's my question. Good, good question, Counselor. So um, you saw in the in the slides that we presented today, uh, these these graphic representation of how where the progress is on specific projects. Uh, our intent is to put those embedded into our into our website so that those would live on our site and that folks could easily pull up our site and see exactly where we're at with a particular project and then also how they can engage on that particular project. So what are the upcoming dates of engagement? Um, what are the what are the uh, yeah the key the key information that we would need from our community to make decisions and that would all be posted on our website. We absolutely, I think, to echo your concerns, we actually actually really are not interested in people having to click too far down. Uh, we want this to be as simple as ac accessible as it possibly can be, while at the same time providing the detail for people who do want it. Uh, all the documents will live on the site as well. Thank you very much. That's right. Yeah, thank you very much. Great presentation. Um, I do have a just a quick question about um, spreading the word. Is is that something that um, you can? It'll be in different. I'm, I'm assuming it will be in different, many different ways of uh, accessing that in different languages and um, at least in Spanish, since we have um, a big majority of people here that speak Spanish. Um, and also if. Is if you're when you're talking about improvements or like suggestions, how do I, I think it's in be in the same uh, following what Councillor Brooks was saying? Like, how is that going to be? Is it going to be like okay, this time we're gonna, are we looking for, you know, I don't know where your suggestions could be like for instance Lafke Lafke Park, which is the closest to my home. I mean, if someone comes in and suggests like a giant poop off you. <laughs> how are you going to say, I mean, how do you, I guess, not decline, but convey the message that is, um, what kind of activities can go there? What kind of things that, um, based on the playground, I mean, limit, limit people from suggesting things that are almost impossible to build at certain parts. Yeah, that, that's a great, my question makes sense, but <laughs> great question. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's fantastic when we when we get sincere input and ideas about how people desire their their tax funds to be invested. And so what we are doing is we are not we're not making those decisions. Um, voters have already selected these key investment areas. Mm -hmm. There is a specific 
investment outside of that, we are capturing that. And to your question, we are recognizing their contribution and informing them that this particular idea is outside of the group of investments that voters approved and that council approved. Um, and we are we are keeping your idea. And if if and when at a later date uh, we have funds from this bond to to put into new projects or other projects, um, yours is now included in that that potential basket of of potential other projects uh, that we'll need to vet at a later date. And so we're communicating that directly with folks. Yeah, so that makes sense. Thank you. Because, yeah, we have some pre-approved um, projects. So if they come out with something off that it doesn't fit in the park, then it would be a good way to say it's, you know, um, maybe for next time. Um, the other question I have is when you say a field, and this is on the athletic field uh, part, um, are we talking about, I think I want to make sure that people understand what we're talking about as, as far as athletic field, because I don't want people to under, misunderstand what that means. Um, you know, they might think like um, a giant piece of land with, you know, the many different functions, which I, I don't mind. I wouldn't mind that, but I just think we need to clarify what does that mean so people don't think in their minds oh, you didn't build what you say you were going to build, which is an athletic field, but this is not an athletic field, or this is more than what we wanted. Or um, Can you elaborate a little bit on that concept? Certainly, yes. Uh, we fully intend to uh, have a really robust conversation about, about what the question you're asking, and that is uh, what scale, what quality, what when we say athletic field what does that exactly mean um and so we we will bring together key stakeholders in our community and and have that conversation and really define what it is we're looking for and um what what i know initially through the through the bond committee that you formed uh what that group intended and indicated it was that this these are these are multi-sport facilities and so regardless of what sport you're participating in, there's a spot for you. And, and so that we build these to, to sort of that expectation that we accommodate all of the different sports that are played uh, in our community. And so we would kind of start from that point and then get very specific about design and, and have a really uh, thoughtful process about what the specifics of a particular site look like, all the way down to uh, location of lighting, um, width of walkways, uh, number of benches or seats, and uh, and art, if there is any, um, we would talk about all of that and more. Okay. Well, thank you. Once you have all that information about um, spreading the word, just let me let me know. I can help and post it on my Facebook or send it to friends and people I know. Thank you. Other questions. Right. Seeing none, thank you, Richard, uh, Richard Ross, uh, for the update. The only thing I might uh, add is, you know, you mentioned semi-annual updates, but when we have big construction updates, you might want to come in, you know, a little bit more often, especially when the Veterans Plaza kicks into high gear. You know, as kind of like with the Walter moving forward, you know, Mike did when we had a whole bunch of projects going on, he'd come in a little more often than uh, when it was quiet time during the winter. Right. Will do. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, thank you Councilors. Thank you. All right. Okay, that brings us to agenda review and roundtable uh, tonight. I believe Pledge of Allegiance is led by Council President Pratt tonight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> for the huge crowd, yeah. Uh, then we have a proclamation tonight uh, for uh, Pride Month. I'm assuming, Councilor Sacco, you want to do it? Uh, any questions on the consent agenda tonight? No questions on the six items? Uh, that brings us to Council Roundtable. I'll go ahead and start with Councilor Sacco. Um, the only uh, event I attended was the Clackamas City 
association dinner um, last week, and it was my first time meeting many folks that I've met on uh, Zoom, so it was really great to just uh, mingle. It was, I thought it was a really fun event. We played trivia. Um, There's a couple of us in attendance there, um, so I found it um, uh, very beneficial and uh, looking forward to meeting some of those more folks at the C4 retreat in a couple weeks. That's it. All right. Thanks. That's what I hear. I don't have anything to report. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I know, right? <laughs> oh, sure he is. Uh, nothing to report. Wow. Thankfully. Wait, wait. <laughs> Councilor Gonzalez. I have nothing to report either, else either. All right. Councilor Brooks. Um, uh, I attended the ab meeting, <clears throat> which was um, just going over um, some review requirements for next year. Um, and then we did the uh, Twelton Arts Advisory Committee. And the focus of that mostly was on the Veterans Plaza and doing the process for the um, the art selection, artist selection. And we met with the veterans. We met as a body with the veterans group overall and then uh, alone with the, with the um, arts committee. And the other thing I mentioned already, but um, just to keep your eye open for anybody that's an artist in Tualatin that you want to acknowledge. Thanks. That's President Pratt. Um, I have a few here. So on um, May 9th, I went to the Stafford Hamlet meeting and um, they had Jules Walter speaking. So, you know, at the topic was tolling. But um, at that point, she really didn't know much about the subcommittee or have much information. Um, on the 12th, I went to the Greater Portland presentation. Oh, the Clean Water Services. Yeah, the Greater Portland, I can't read it, Inc. presentation. And then uh, we got a, according to the mayor, abbreviated tour, uh, which was still fascinating. You know. And then um, C4 Metro, um, we got a little update on the regional transportation plan. The, oh, I can't read my handwriting. I'm sorry. Oh, there's a, Cities or something program. Anyway, and then um, we talked about tolling. At that point, everybody realized that a pause on tolling, um, the tolling charges didn't mean a total pause on tolling. So everybody was kind of worked up. And um, I guess the comment was we can't just kick the can down the road for two years. We need to keep on top of this, is what the plan is for C4. Um, I went to the dinner with um, Kristen. That was really fun in Westland. And, and um, the mayor's table be our table at trivia <laughs> <laughs> by far. <laughs> and then Friday and Saturday, I did the um, TVF in our community thing. Oh my gosh, I would recommend that to anybody. It was amazing. You have such respect for those people after you're done. Um, they um, they spoke so highly of our police department and they said not, they don't say that about all police departments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the chief wanted me to say hi to Sherilyn. And I will mention that um, when I was at the fire station, we were talking back and forth and their comment to me is, when are we going to get food carts in downtown Tualatin? So just thought I'd mention that. Because <laughs> they go out for lunch a lot. <laughs> and that is it. All right. Uh, quite a busy two weeks. Uh, as was mentioned before, the Greater Portland Inc. had an executive meeting at Clean Water Services Durham facility um, to let people know what Clean Water Services does. Uh, we they're uh, ratcheting up their game to get the message out and actually have people see what they do because you just see they have to write a check to the city <laughs> that you know the developers have to pay and don't have any fathom of what they do how big their facilities are and their mission. So it's always good to go. Uh, they were ran all along in the presentation. So the tour got to really shrunken. Uh, it's usually the tour is over an hour. It was basically what, 15 minutes of that. They didn't get to see much, but uh, they said they're going to do it again. So if you missed it, uh, you'll have a second chance at it. 
On May 13th, uh, Neighbors Nourishing Communities had their annual plant handout. Uh, 37 registered gardeners, uh, they all came. We were shocked. It was a beautiful uh, day. It was the day before Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving. The day before Mother's Day, we had uh, OSU uh, master gardeners that had helped folks uh, with any kind of questions they had. The Grange was there handing out seeds. Uh, so looking forward to a lot of food donations being given to the Tualatin Food Pantry. So one of the things you do in exchange for getting in these free starts is you agree to donate at least 20% of your proceeds to the food pantry. On the 15th was the Washington County Coordinating Committee meeting. Uh, Mayor Wenzel uh, was renominated and voted back onto the Region 1 Act. Uh, Mayor Sherado of uh, Durham decided not to re-up. So uh, Councilor Kim Young from Sherwood will take his place on the Region 1 Act. Uh, there was a presentation on the regional high capacity strategy and uh, Tiger Twelve and Sherwood sure continue to be super frustrated that 99W is still like a tier three or tier four corridor. So it's years away from having any kind of BRT or any kind of rapid transit. Well, um, Mike McCarthy brought up that uh, we don't agree with the way uh, Metro is calculating traffic. They're not looking at the traffic that generates starting in our uh, Marion County or Yenville County. They're just thinking within the counties in our area. So hopefully we can change that. And again, east-west connectivity, still tier four project until, like I mentioned, I bet you when tolling starts, it's going to be bumping up uh, with their priority. And finally, at that meeting, there's the JPAC trip where a bunch of uh, folks that represent JPAC and Washington County are heading to DC on June 5th. I'm one of them uh, to lobby uh, DOT and our legislators on some funding uh, packages related transportation, bike, ped projects, safety projects. I know a lot of the people in the council here will be very happy to hear that the bridge is not on the agenda for Washington County. It's not one of the projects they're focusing on. On uh, the 15th was the Washington County Chair and Mayor's meeting. Uh, we talked about Washington County's budget situation, uh, how they're going to fix that, and the impacts to MSTEP. Uh, as you, I think we all heard that it's going to be a 7% decrease of funding, general fund transfer, which is about $3 million, is not going to go towards, towards uh, transportation projects. And all the mayors are kind of very concerned that. Uh, they might go to this well again year after year after year, taking MSTIP money away from transportation projects and put towards filling the gap in their general fund. Uh, so it was uh, a good dialogue between Chair Harrington and the mayors, but um, you know you don't want to get another person's business, but when it impacts you and the folks in our region, we want to make sure um, that these traffic uh, projects get done. They risk, they said, be assured that the Twelfth and Sherwood Road project will not be cut in any way since it's already underway. It's any of those projects that are on the books from 2012 that they're gonna go after. So 12 through 2016, our project's gonna either ask to have delayed or severely cut back uh, because they don't have the money to pay for them. Uh, on the 17th, Greater Portland Inc. had their uh, monthly board meeting. They had a clean financial audit. So their uh, books are, <laughs> Are fine. There's no malfeasance there. What was interesting there is that there's something called DCI did what they're calling uh, the perception of Portland. And one of the things we're battling in Portland is you know what we've seen in the media over the years. And they're a marketing company that helps uh, change that perception. And so they did an analysis of what uh, Portland is thought of. Um, from folks outside the region, and there's no surprises. We're all well aware of it. And now what do we do to fix those perceptions? Um, I know Council Brooks is originally from Michigan. It's one of those things that um, that endeavor that Detroit had to deal with, changing effort, you know, changing what people thought of Detroit and spinning it around and showing you there's a lot of benefit of locating in both of our cities. Uh, had our meeting on the 18th, Clackamas County uh, Chair, Mayor's meeting, very brief. Uh, we talked about their budget. <laughs> uh, so County uh, Chair uh, Smith, they're just beginning uh, to get in the weeds of their budget. Uh, and of course, we will talk about tolling and the pause on toll collections uh, and not, you know, 
just because the tolling pause is taking place, we're not giving up. We're um, staying at it. We'll continue uh, to work with ODOT. Uh, and finally, today was the RTAC, which was, an, you know, was a good one to be at because it was considered a reset. Uh, ODOT has heard the message from the legislature and from the governor. Uh, ODOT Director Strickler basically had a listening session today where we went literally uh, around the table uh, and he wanted to hear uh, what we thought of the pause, what we hope to accomplish, and how we can do better. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this, that um, they uh, committed to two-way conversation, not just one way. Uh, compromise, uh, but as was mentioned before, uh, tolling is not stopping. They're still moving forward on gantries and that kind of planning. <clears throat> All that is paused is actual collection of a fee to cross the Abernathy Bridge. Um, the RTAC uh, committee will continue beyond December, was agreed upon, uh, with my ask of that the RTAC having direct connection to the new subcommittee that's going to be formed by the legislature and the OTC. Uh, four other folks uh, supported that idea, so we'll see what happens with that. And with that, I just want to mention, I'll do it again at the end of our regular city council meeting. Remember Memorial Day, we have our, commence our commencement, our ceremony. A lot of people have commencements. <laughs> but the Memorial, the Memorial Day celebration at the Commons, 1045 a.m. Remember, it's at the splash pad, not in the cemetery. I'd say to get there around 1030 because I think it's going to be very well attended. Uh, new this year uh, are the floating model boats in the uh, lake, so that'd be fun to look at. Um, I was kind of, I was, I'm now excited because I wrote, reached out to Congresswoman Salinas, and she will be attending. So a, a new featured speaker. I said I'd give up my time for her. <laughs> People can listen to her instead of listening to me. So anything else? All right, we're done a little bit early, so let's come on back at seven o'clock. Now go ahead and adjourn this work session.